Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of the Minnehaha County Commission. We'll go ahead and start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, meeting documents are available for review down next to Commissioner Heiberger. It's just a reminder to silence your cell phones. And uh, Craig or Carol are here if you need a listening device. That takes us to routine business. First item would be to consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item is to approve the commission meeting minutes for August 4th, 2020. So, so moved. Move. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item are bills to be paid in the amount of $476,698.21. Pay the bills. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? Commissioner Bart. Uh, you know, the bills are pretty low today, and I think this is how they normally look when we don't have a big uh, highway project or construction project. We're Paying on. I noticed that there were quite a few bills for paying rent and uh, a couple of funerals that we paid for, but this is kind of the low end of things. All right, anything else? All right, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, there's several reports there that I would recommend for everyone's review. Um, they always contain quite a bit of uh, really good information. And as um, Commissioner Barth mentioned, it's highway construction season, so there's a big update on what the uh, County Highway Department has been working on included in that. That takes us to item five, personnel actions. Second. Motion and a second to approve the routine personnel <coughs> actions. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item, item six, uh, abatements recommended for approval. There are none. Item seven is um, to authorize the auditor to post notice of a hearing on August 25th for the annual 2020 Burn JAG program spending plan. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Joe Bosman with the Sheriff's Office. This morning I have in front of you a request to post notice about a public hearing in two weeks, which we will uh, showcase our spending plan <coughs> wooden joint with the Sioux Falls Police Department for the 2020 Burn JAG grant. And this is a grant requirement that we have to have a period of public comment. And so by posting notice, this gives uh, people advanced idea that we will be back in two weeks. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thanks for Thank coming. You. Um, item eight, planning and zoning notices. There are none. Takes us to item nine, which is a petition for compromise of lien. Melinda. Good morning, <clears throat> Melinda Storley, commission assistant. Uh, the action requested today is to compromise and release Dean, lien DPNO 91395 in full with payment of $5,000. The petitioner and the father of her children have applied for a mortgage to purchase a home in Sioux Falls for $302,000, but were unable to move forward on a closing date of August 6 <clears throat> because of the lien. The lender and seller will not commit to setting another closing date unless the lien is eliminated. Her narrative explains that she is a single parent of nine children, ages seven through 24. Four of the older children have been attending an education program in Omaha but with the schools closing due to COVID, they had to return to Sioux Falls in short notice. She states that the family is too large to be living in a three bedroom apartment she is renting and that there's not enough room for all of them. She's requesting a full compromise and release of lien DPNO 90, uh, 39, five, oh, pardon me, that's an error. It's uh, 91395 and is offering to pay approximately 36% or $5,000 of the current balance uh, which is an amount of uh, $13,680.72. The lien represents poor relief for medical expenses recorded in 2016 and 2020. She made two partial payments toward the lien, totaling uh, $80. One of them was May of 2020 and the other July 2020. 
The petitioner is employed, uh, has been since 2004. Her application shows an annual income of $37,608, assets totaling $4,300, and $827 in liabilities. Her 2019 income tax shows a refund of $9,540, um, and closed were in the packet were copies of the documents she sent uh, supporting her claims. Uh, she is here if you have any direct questions for her. So first I'll let you ask questions from Linda. Are there any questions for Melinda? I see none. Um, if the petitioner is here, she has an opportunity to speak. You don't have to identify yourself. You can just speak from wherever you're sitting. Would you like to say something? Would you like to say anything in addition to what Melinda already explained? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? Madam Chair. Commissioner Barth. Um, I appreciate your situation there, but you know, looking at your income, I don't see how you can afford a uh, $300,000 house. You know, you don't have enough money to make a 20% down payment. I, I have to assume that you're getting support from your four older children and the man that lives with you. And uh, I think there's more to this story that we don't currently have. And uh, that concerns me. Other comments? Madam Chair? Commissioner I, Barth. I, I'm ready to make a motion if okay. you'd like. I guess I would like us to uh, ask for 50% uh, on, this, on this debt, which is, I think, something like $6,840. Okay, so that's your motion? Yes. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it just for conversation. Okay, so there's a motion and a second. Is there conversation? Commissioner Barth? I would have stuff to say, but I think that uh, my motion uh, uh, stands on its own as a, uh, you know, obviously I'd, I'd like to get something from this, uh, this lien. Uh, I, I would also note that uh, some of the services were provided even this year, I think, as I recall. And uh, so it's quite possible we'll be getting more requests for that type of uh, service. Uh, and uh, we need the money to help other people. I would just say this is, I'm still thinking because it's just complicated because I tend to co agree with Commissioner Barth as far as I don't know how you can pay, afford a $300,000 house on that amount of income. And so it just, I just feel like it's, it's partially incomplete. And so I don't really, I'm looking for wisdom from my other commissioners. Commissioner Karski volunteers to be the wise one. Yeah, but <laughs> you're gonna get what you paid for. <laughs> um, You know, my heart goes out on this, and typically, if I mean this is a standalone, you know, there's no other buyer, I, I probably would be in favor of of the offer and and be willing to accept it. But there are sev several other adults that are going to be living here, including the co-purchaser of the property. We know nothing about, um, and as Commissioner Barth pointed out, we we did spend a lot of money for. Um, medical bills this year and um, it's reasonable to assume that I mean or maybe be foolish not to assume that it couldn't happen again I I think that's a reasonable offer counter offer to the um, applicants um, initial offer to settle this and to, to settle for half is just seems reasonable to me and I'm I'm willing to go with that Unless I knew more information about, you know, the co-buyer of this property, um, who is the father of some of these children. Well, I can make a couple of comments, and frankly, I agree with the other comments that were made. Um, unfortunately, the uh, payments and the insurance and taxes are going to be about. Um, 
40%, maybe 50% of uh, the current income and trying to cover all the closing costs is going to take all of the uh, tax return that you've received. I don't know how financially this can work and still not be concerned about adding to uh, some financial problems for the family, especially when there's nine children to take care of. So um, I would agree with Commissioner Barth that if we can come up with 50%, uh, then I would be in favor of processing this. Okay, well, we have a motion and a second, and it seems like we have um, some agreement. And so um, we'll take a roll call vote on this, please. Heiberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Barth? Yes. Benega? Aye. Bender? Aye. Um, so the motion is to, um, the motion would be to accept payment of 50% of the amount of the lien and then um, forgive the rest. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, that takes us to opportunity for public comment. If there's someone here today who would like to speak. Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. You look pretty well rested for a guy who just made it through the fair. <laughs> well, yeah, we're getting, uh, we're getting a little bit caught up. So uh, Scott Wick with the WH Lion Fairgrounds from Empire Fair. I uh, just want to stop in and give you uh, uh, a, the 10,000 foot update on uh, how we uh, progressed through the eight days. We had, uh, it was, you know, interesting times with everything that's going on. Uh, a lot of neat stories out there from the food vendors. Some, some neat little things are a lot, uh, I'd say over half the food vendors actually had to take their uh, booze out of winter storage and, and de-winterize them just to come out and do the fair. We had some of our partners from Minnesota that were just coming down to our fair because they wanted to support us. We appreciate that very much. The weather overall was very favorable. We had uh, one sticky day and some sprinkles here and there, but overall we had very good weather. We had two days that were uh, exceptional for us, and that was Monday and Wednesday that were actually uh, days that were better than uh, the previous five years. But the days that those other days were, were very, very slow. We're, uh, we're going to probably be down about a third in attendance, which is very much understandable. The carnival uh, was very happy and pleased. They actually uh, said it was a privilege and an honor to be able to come up to South Dakota and play the fair. They'll be, they'll be going to Aberdeen and then Rapid City and then uh, Huron, and they're done for the year. If they hadn't came up here to do these fairs, they would have been shut down for the entire year. So overall, we're very pleased and proud of the fair that we did uh, put together and w w that we were able to pull off. So. We appreciate uh, the county commission support, city support, uh, all the law enforcement that was out there, and EMS and everybody, and especially the guests and the citizens that came out to support us. Uh, we saw some different traffic patterns, obviously, with, uh, with the pandemic, but uh, we're very, uh, very pleased with uh, being able to have the fair and continue on and provide that event for the community, and uh, we, we felt that we were very well supported. Any comments, questions? We really appreciate the work you guys did. I know that that was a tremendous challenge, and um, so we appreciate it. Yeah, we, we, I tell you what, we learned a lot about ourselves and our staff and how to become more efficient. We've obviously been without the, the, the uh, support of the uh, inmate program, which uh, those guys do a tremendous amount of work, and it was uh, quite taxing, but we made it through. It's going to take a little longer to get everything cleaned up without that support, but uh, Hopefully, as, as things progressively get better, we can get them back out to the fairgrounds eventually and continue on with uh, all the events that are coming up for the fourth quarter. All right, oh, Commissioner Benninga. Scott, I'd also like to uh, acknowledge the fair board. Uh, a few days I was out there, I think every member of your fair board that manages the fair from an administrative standpoint, along with yourself, I think they were all there participating at some level. and. Their dedication to the fair is pretty incredible. Yes, they. Uh, we we met every day at four o'clock to talk about the day before and moving forward, and uh, a great amount of support there. Yeah, they're all definitely very passionate about what they do. Mm -hmm. They are. All right. Well, thanks for coming out this thank week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else here for public comment this morning? All right. If not, we'll move on to regular bis business. First item, item 10, is a public hearing to consider declaring property 
legally described as lots two and three of Village of Ellis Subdivision, Section 9-101-50, Wayne Township, a public nu nuisance. David Heinhold, good morning. Good morning, David Heinhold, County Planning Department. So I just have a little update on the public hearing for the public nuisance at 1509 North Ellis Road, located in the unincorporated area of Ellis. Um, just have some pictures for you. I met with the property owner actually yesterday afternoon. Um, he works during the week, so he's unable to be at the meeting. Um, I did have a phone call with him last week when I sent out the, the last letter for this meeting. Um, so just giving you an update as far as the pictures that I saw. The, you can kind of see this is a, an overview from Ellis Road. Um, you can see the garage. It's the house off to the left there. Um, we received a complaint about the tree branches and junk lying around the, the property. Um, this is the backyard, which there's actually like a 20-foot alley on the back side of the house. Um, it's not really a public road, but there, there was some junk lying in the, the yard around the house. You can see that that has been mowed and all the junk has been picked up in the yard. Um, the, the white thing, it's just, that's just a cap for something that in the yard there. Um, so that has a purpose there. So all the, the weeds have been maintained, as you saw in the earlier pictures. Um, this is the garage, detached garage. All the, there were a bunch of volunteer trees growing up around the, the garage, and there was some junk lying around that that the, the owner had put away, um, and everything was removed from there. That is, that's the owner's truck um, that he traveled to the site. So there, there are no vehicles on the site presently um, and then this is looking from the that kind of that alley road mm -hmm. towards the house um, it's just some uh, rhubarb there in the foreground um, but no noxious weeds or anything and then this is just looking back at the garage and then I think I have one more picture of that and then so it just shows that the cleanup has occurred on the property um, and if you have any questions, I'll be glad to go through the other pictures as well if you'd like to see those. Um, I do have copies if you need those. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. But at this point, staff is recommending to withdraw the, the request for abating the public nuisance. Commissioner Karski. Thank you, David. One of the calls that I received from a citizen was about the house itself where doors were open and you know animals free to come and go out of the house has that been taken care of also so i looked on minimap and the the neighbor the neighboring property owner to the north of that house bought it recently and the last time i drove by it yesterday afternoon everything's been picked up in front of the garage they do have some dirt lying in the front of the driveway but i imagine they're working on doing something to maintain that property so you're comfortable that this shouldn't be a problem anymore? This shouldn't be a problem. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Commissioner Barth. You know, having looked at the other pictures where they had appliances piled up and uh, uh, branches piled against the house, I mean, talk about a fire hazard, et cetera. Um, this is a, a great cleanup here, and I think uh, clearly planning was able to get through finally to the uh, owner and uh, he took action and that's all we really want on these things we just want people to pull up their socks and make it look right and, uh, and take into consideration that they have neighbors and uh, and public health is an issue all the way so thank you uh, David and thanks to the uh, homeowner in this case Commissioner Karski so do we have to make a motion to deny the well, it is a public hearing, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that, that we have, if there's anybody here, that they have an opportunity to speak. And so um, if there's any other proponent here of this request? Seeing none, was there anyone here that was opposed that wanted to speak? All right, so seeing none, I think that um, unless somebody wanted to make a motion to declare the um, the property a public nuisance, then the um, just dies for lack of taking any action. All right. Okay. Any any motions? All right. We will 
move on then to item 11. And item 11 is to consider a motion to authorize the highway department to purchase two dump bodies and hydraulic systems for new plow trucks through source well, source well national procurement contract. Number 080818-HEN. DJ, are you with us via telephone? Oh, via Zoom, there you are, hi. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. DJ Boothie, Highway Superintendent. On April 14th of this year, the Commission authorized the purchase of two truck chassis, and we should receive those in the next two or three weeks. And this request is uh, the request to purchase the truck bodies that will go along with those uh, to make them full, complete snowplow trucks. Uh, compared to last year, last year we did uh, our own light bars and rear view cameras. And this year we added the light bar and the rear view cameras to the truck build. And then we also changed a couple of the mild steel pieces to stainless steel pieces. And we received, we got quotes off of two of the contracts that we can purchase off of this one, the source well contract and also the Minnesota state bed. Uh, this one was the lower of the two uh, for $139,809 per truck. Uh, so the combined purchase will be $279,618. And we have provisions in this contract to receive the, the truck chassis and the truck build after January 1st, so that will go on next year's budget. So uh, with that, I'll stand by and, and if you have any questions. Questions for DJ this morning? My only question, I guess, would be, uh, you look like uh, one of the more flamboyant relief pitchers for the Minnesota Twins. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, are you trying out? <clears throat> Did you catch all that, DJ? I, I heard flamboyant for the out, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know where that went. <laughs> Sorry. Commissioner Barth thinks you you look like a professional baseball player. So. Oh, okay. Well, I, hey, thanks. I I would love to play for the Twins. <laughs> and then you could just pay for these yourself, and you wouldn't need our approval, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> All right, any questions about the proposal in front of us, Commissioner Beninga? Uh, DJ, we had conversations in the budget process about some carry forward and some cash related issues. Uh, is this purchase, even if part of it's been made and the rest of it's coming in next year, is that gonna have a negative effect on the finalized budget that you put together? It, it was uh, incorporated into the revised budget numbers that I presented. And so originally this purchase was planned to be in 2020 yet this year. And so we've delayed the delivery of these vehicles so we can purchase them or pay for the purchase in 2021. But you did have it in the revised 2020? Sorry, 2021, that's correct. So it is in the revised 2021 budget? DJ, I think the question, just to, if you could confirm that it is included in your revised 2021 budget. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Other questions for DJ? Make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Karski? Aye. Barth? Yes. Benega? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, DJ. That takes us to item 12, which is to consider a motion to appoint three candidates and three alternates to the 2020 Appraisal Board for evaluation of Minnehaha County owned, um, for the Minnehaha County owned and unmined gravel pit and tax deed properties. Craig Dewey, good morning. Good morning, Craig Dewey Commission Office. Uh, this memo was developed in conjunction with the auditor, Bob Litz. Uh, he is not feeling well this morning, and so I will be uh, covering down on the uh, alternate portion. Uh, the direction that the commissioners provided was to move forward with taking steps to surplus and sell the unmined county gravel pit. According to state law, prior to that property being sold, it must be appraised. And so we have two options available to us as a local government. We can either pay for a private appraisal or we can appoint an appraisal board. In the past, uh, three individuals, uh, Tom Dempster, Kyle Helseth, and Ken McFarland, have served on that appraisal board. I reached out to each of them 
and uh, ask them uh, if they would be provided uh, tools such as a borings report as well as a, a commercial broker's opinion of value if those would be tools that could assist them in uh, appraising the gravel pit for a value. Uh, they indicated that they could and uh, in something that uh, may sound odd but was music to my ears, Kyle Helseth, uh, former equalization director, has over 20 years of experience uh, praising gravel pits uh, when he worked for the Department of Revenue for South Dakota. Uh, so those three individuals did commit uh, to serving on the appraisal board for the gravel pit. Uh, we should receive the broker's opinion of value at the end of the week here this week and therefore next week uh, the individuals on the appraisal board could set about determining that value. Uh, now separately, the portion that uh, the auditor prepared, uh, the appraisal board also appraises tax deed properties that the county sells each year. And so uh, Bob was thinking that uh, in the case of any of the three individuals that would be appointed that I mentioned before uh, could not uh, participate, Bob would uh, request that three alternates be uh, uh, appointed as well. Uh, so the three uh, individuals are uh, Diane Ripkema, Larry Bakken, and Dave Dunlap. Uh, if the three original individuals for the appraisal board uh, can participate, then the alternates wouldn't be needed. But again, uh, the alternates are there just in case. would be happy to answer any questions that you'd have. Questions for Craig? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Arth? Aye. Benega? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that takes us to item 13. Lori Montes has been patiently waiting for us on Zoom. So um, to consider a motion to authorize the chair to sign an MOU with the Sioux Falls Area Community Foundation allowing Minnehaha County Human Services to disperse allotted one Sioux Falls, fund, Falls funds. Lori. Good morning, Commission. Lori Montes, Human Services. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Um, so the One Sioux Falls Fund is managed by the Sioux Falls Area Community Foundation, and there is an unmet needs committee that has been meeting um, since the inception of that fund in March, um, and I've been the representative from Human Services that's been part of that a committee that has spent oh gosh, over $2 million um, in helping uh, people with rent, um, hotel, and mortgage assistance. There are some funds remaining in the One Sioux Falls Fund, and so the committee was talking about how to best get those funds out to people in need. And um, so we came up with some different options for some of the funds, but the one that I'm here to talk about today is that there is $300,000 that um, the Sioux Falls Area Community Foundation would like to uh, grant to human services so that we can assist people who are coming in requesting assistance for rent, mortgage, and utilities um, to uh, pay some of those bills. What we're seeing at human services is that a lot of those bills, because the landlord has been nice or the utility provider has not um, done disconnects. Now, you know, that's starting to change a little bit. And so people are coming in that are owing maybe multiple months of uh, utility assistance or rent. And so um, One Sioux Falls would like us to help get those funds out to those folks in need based on um, the parameters that the group has set up, um, which are a little bit different than county. <clears throat> and so um, what we would be doing is really able to reach out, excuse me, <clears throat> to a larger larger population of people, um, primarily because the one Sioux Falls um, lit income limit is under 200% of federal poverty level, where uh, the one that county usually operates under is 100%. So it just allows us to reach out to a few more of those people um, in need that may be working part-time, maybe not back to full-time yet, that kind of thing. Um, so, what I'm asking for today is um, a signature from uh, the chair to go ahead and assist One Sioux Falls in helping to dispense um, those $300,000 in funds. Questions? Thanks, Lori. Are there any questions for Lori? Motion to approve. Second. And a motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? Sure. Commissioner Barth. So this uh, has been cleared by our legal folks? Uh, yes, it was. Um, 
think if you look on the contract, you'll see that there is a note that the state's attorney did approve it. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Commissioner Benega. Lori, I'm curious, what's your estimate and how long those funds are gonna last to support the individuals that are applying? Um, I anticipate uh, probably not more than three months. I think we'll be through it in that amount of time, maybe even less. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right, we had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Lori. Takes us to Thank item. Thank you so much. Takes us to item 14, liaison reports. Are there any liaison reports this morning? I can I can see the two commissioners dueling with each other to see who gets to do the report. So uh, we're not dueling. We're just both tired. <laughs> um, we spent seven hours yesterday um, interviewing uh, firms that are going to participate in the highway department process. Uh, we're going to do some site visits and uh, hopefully complete all of those processes before the end of August and uh, come up with a plan to start the process and move forward with uh, the highway department relocation or repair and maintenance or whatever is going to happen. Uh, I think it's going to be obvious that it needs to be replaced totally but uh, we're just getting started but uh, literally the groundwork is uh, just beginning i don't think we can give too many details at this point because we haven't made any final decisions but uh, it was an interesting process with a variety of um, options to pursue I, I had seven and a half hours, but I wasn't counting. Um, <laughs> you know, I have to thank, we have, we hired a very good owner's rep, uh, Dick Strasberg with Tegra, who's really made the process very smooth. Craig Dewey from our commission office mm -hmm. too, his help in kind of guiding this whole as project manager on it. So, um, yeah, we had three extremely well qualified um, local contractors that um, applied for the job and it was a very difficult decision to come to what we're going to do. So. Yes. It's the, it's the good and the bad. We all appreciate how much time you guys are putting in on that. And um, the great thing is you had three well-qualified people. And the bad thing is then, then it's really hard to choose between very well-qualified people. So mm -hmm. um, we appreciate the hard work and the long day you guys put in yesterday. I think the song that comes to my mind is we've only just begun. <laughs> Madam Chair. Say that with such enthusiasm. <laughs> yes, Commissioner Barth. That having uh, uh, snoozed through many, many meetings <laughs> where you <laughs> ramrodded the jail project, uh, you guys are in for a lot of work here. It is a tremendous amount of work. I Very was going to add to those comments and say you guys have a you guys have a really high bar to reach when these two other commissioners uh, brought us in under budget in the last project. So good luck. Well, it's good we do have a really great team. And yeah, I, do. I mean, I think what Dean said about, you know, having the owner's rep and then having the team put together at the beginning, the decisions that are being made right now are the most critical decisions about the architect and the, and the um, construction team that you put together. And, and Dick does a really good job of making sure you get, get the right people at the table, which produces a great project overall. So, but we thank, we thank you guys for that. It is a lot of work, so. Anybody else? Commissioner Heiberger. Um, so this last week I went to Chamberlain for the South Dakota Association of County Commissioners board meeting. Um, it was conclusively decided that we will be going forward with our convention in September. And I believe that all the commissioners are signed up. So I thank you all for that. There is a golf outing on Sunday uh, at Elmwood Golf Course and it'll be a best ball. So if you're a golfer, it would be great if you'd participate in that too. They've already got quite a few people signed up for that. Um, we went through the numbers that we have of thus far people that are committed to coming and we have enough people coming um, that we won't go in the hole and um, maybe make, I, I can't save a profit, but maybe, but we have, um, have enough vendors. We're only short a few vendors from what we normally run. So vendors are willing to come. We have a great big, huge outdoor um, I don't know what you'd call it other than a vendor, a great big outdoor display of different vendors too. 
that are going to be there. So I think we're going to put on a very good convention. Obviously, they're very um, aware of social distancing and um, hand washing, and um, we will be not having a banquet or food will be prepackaged or served to you. So they've gone through everything they can to try to keep everybody safe and make sure that the that we're spaced out. Um, the other thing we talked about at the convention was the proposals which Minnehaha County had submitted to. We submitted um, adequate state fund, uh, resolution number one was adequate state funding for to reconstruct a portion of S Slip Up Creek Road from 476th Avenue to the State Veterans C Cemetery. And ours was just to bring this forward as, um, we're not bringing it as a bill, but to ask to the association will support any bill that's brought forward or any work that's brought forward about trying to get funding to um, pave that gravel road that right now is going to be going to the State Veterans Cemetery in the northern part of Minnehaha County. So that passed unanimously. Our next resolution was supporting legislation allowing electors of, um, electors of municipalities to consider a one-cent temporary municipal sales tax for specific infrastructure projects. We debated this one for a long time and we actually changed how it would look for, the one that I just read is what the municipalities in Minnehaha County um, accepted. The state association has changed it for how they will support that resolution and so the one that we adopted says supporting legislation allowing electors of municipalities or counties to consider up to a one cent temp temporary sales tax for specific infrastructure projects. It actually mirrors more or less what Coddington County brought forward for a bill last year to build um, jails and courthouses when they wanted a, a temporary tax allowable, which would be um, um, referred to taxpayers in their specific county. So they, as a state resolution, they have changed what our local group has put forward, and that's how they'll support it if it comes forward. And then there was one more. And the other resolution was brought forward by Lake Region District, and it says it's about ab abating taxes on flooded property. And I'm just going to read the resolution part of it to you. It says, be it resolved that Day County, on behalf of other local political subdivisions and taxpayers, request that the South Dakota legislators and South Dakota Association of County Commissioners explore what can be done and address the inadequacies of the above situation, which is they've got a lot of farmland that has been flooded and they're paying their taxes on their flooded farmland, but yet game fish and parks and any recreational people can boat on top of their property and there's no fee and nobody's reimbursing them for the taxes. And this has been an ongoing issue. They just brought it forward to us that to just ask for support and continuing to try to look for a solution. So those were the three resolutions that came to and they will be voted on, they passed the board, um, in the form that I said, and then they will be going on to the full convention to be voted on the convention by the members. Commissioner Karski. Uh, will the South Dakota Municipal League support that change to the one cent tax? I have no idea what they'll do. This is what this is the only way that the Association of County Commissioners would support that particular. And they, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I don't really know. I don't. I don't remember how they supported Coddington County's bill last year, actually. They were, they, they, were, they were neutral to it. So I'm not sure how they will go forward with it. We might not, that might end up kind of being a dead in the water. Okay, okay. So. And the state convention is where? It's at the Ramcota in Sioux Falls, and I can't tell you the dates, but it's around September 15th. I only bring and it up because I think it's the first time in years that it's not in here. In Pier, here. Yep. that's correct. So it's it would be nice a good to thing that it's here. In South Dakota, or in Sioux Falls. Anything else? Commissioner Beniga. I just wanted to uh, remind Commissioner Karski that uh, we're also on the Metro Management uh, conversation and that that issue is going to be addressed in its uh, entirety, we hope, in the next few days. So tomorrow at 3.30? 3.30. Yep. So we have some other construction-related comments to make next week. All right. Yay. Madam Chair. You know, that one penny thing is exactly the kind of thing that could help out with Metro Management's uh, construction project. And I would bet that the citizens of Lincoln County would desperately vote for this if it, if it became an option. And uh, 
I'm sorry that they have the problems they're having down there, um, but uh, we have moved forward when confronted with problems. And, you know, it's not like we love to take your money to build bigger jails and stuff, but if it's got to be done, we have chosen to do it. And I think uh, we did the right thing. Commissioner Heiberger. And one more short one. South Dakota, or no, excuse me, Sioux and Prior Leadership Council Executive Board met yesterday and just kind of went through, um, talked about the diversity big table that we had two weeks ago. Um, we're still getting back all the data from all the reports because each table wrote a report on on the subjects. Um, they are Overall, we're real happy with how that went. We had a very good representation of a diverse population. In fact, there was, I believe, more diversity than Anglo-Saxons at that uh, meeting, which was a good thing. And so um, anxious for that report to come out in about another week because in about a week we will have the um, Sioux Empire Leadership Council, the whole entire board will meet, and so hopefully those reports will be ready for that meeting. I would note that the Downtown Rotary yesterday had a program on um, kind of a springing from that conversation to talk more in depth about the criminal justice system and um, reform opportunities. So I can already see uh, ripple effects from that great conversation that was started. So thank you for your leadership in that. Anyone else? All right, so that takes us to new business. Is there any new business? Seeing none, item 16, old business. Is there any old business? Okay, there, oh, Commissioner Bart. I, I would just say in regards to helping people stay in their homes and uh, pay their rent, et cetera, that uh, I can't imagine being a landlord with, say, 6,000 apartments and having 3,000 of them behind and, and paying their rent. I think, uh, you know, that's an incredible burden, and I realize that there's benefits out there to help business, but I imagine that 6,000 apartments in Sioux Falls isn't uh, the equivalent of Boeing aircraft or whatever. Um, so helping people pay their rent, it doesn't just help the people that are living there, it helps the whole community, and this is a good thing. All right, thank you. Anything else? Okay, if there's no other old business, I would um, entertain a motion to recess. So moved. Are we recessing? Or, or I'm sorry, to um, adjourn. Motion that was to adjourn. My motion. Thank you. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week.